please join in singing number 89, God Rest You Merry Gentlemen, 8-9. certain shepherds brought tidings of the same, how that in Bethlehem was born the Son of God by name. Oh, oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy, oh, oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Fear not, then said the angel, let nothing Right. This day is born a Savior, a virgin pure and bright, to free all those who trust in him from Satan's power and might. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy, oh, tidings of comfort. Please join in singing number 88, O Little Town of Bethlehem, 8-8. Eight, eight. Please join in singing number 92, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, 9-2. Oh, 
proclaim Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing glory to the newborn King. Christ by highest heaven adored, Christ the Please join in singing number 91, Away in a Manger, 9-1. Good morning, everyone. Welcome and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. We welcome all who are joining us from Monsignor Woods Hall or from your home. We are so pleased that you are with us in spirit. We respectfully ask that all cell phones be silenced. Thank you. At this Vigil Mass, we are celebrating the Nativity of the Lord. On behalf of Monsignor McCormack, Monsignor McGee, Deacon Mace Mazzoni, Audrey Wilson, Jean Madden, Shannon Collins, and our entire parish staff, we wish you and your family a very happy and blessed Christmas. We are blessed through your presence here tonight. I am Heather McGurin. Our second lector is Joe Tufo, and our leader of song is Victor Serace. Monsignor Michael McCormack is our principal celebrant. New Year's Day, the Solemnity of Mary, the Holy Mother of God, is a holy day of obligation and we will be following our weekend Mass schedule. Mass will be celebrated at 5.30 on Thursday evening, and we will celebrate Mass at 7 a.m., 9 a.m., and 11 a.m. on January 1st. As a Christmas present to our adult parishioners, we are pleased to provide Matthew Kelly's book, I Heard God Laugh. The books are at the doors of the church. The 2021 calendars are available at the doors of the church. The remaining Masses for tonight will be celebrated at 7.30 p.m. and at midnight. Tomorrow morning, Mass will be celebrated at 7 a.m., 9 a.m., and 11 a.m. We greatly appreciate everyone quietly putting their kneeler down on leaving church. Thank you. As we prepare for Mass, the prayer for priestly vocations can be found on the inside cover of the Blue Prayer Book. 
Please stand and let us pray. Father, in your plan for salvation, you provide shepherds for your people. Fill your church with the spirit of courage and love. Raise up worthy ministers for your altars and ardent but gentle servants of the gospel. Bless our archdiocese with numerous vocations to the sacred priesthood. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our entrance hymn is number 93, O Come All Ye Faithful. We'll start with verse 4 in Latin, number 9-3. Oh 
Once again, good evening and welcome to all of you and to all those who are joining us from their home. And once again, Merry Christmas to you all. Let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. God, who gladden us year by year as we wait in hope for our redemption, grant that just as we joyfully welcome your only begotten Son as our Redeemer, we may also merit to face him confidently when he comes again as our judge. 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. For Zion's sake, I will not be silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not be quiet until her vindication shines forth like the dawn and her victory like a burning torch. Nations shall be behold your vindication and all the kings your glory. You shall be called by a new name pronounced by the mouth of the Lord. You shall be a glorious crown in the hand of the Lord, a royal diadem held by your God. No more shall people call you forsaken or your land desolate, but you shall be called my delight and your land espoused. For the Lord delights in you and makes your land his spouse. As a young man marries a virgin, your builder shall marry you. And as a bridegroom rejoices in his bride, so shall your God rejoice in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. with my chosen one I have sworn to David my servant forever will I confirm your posterity and establish your throne for all generations forever I will see the people who know the joyful shout in the light of your countenance O Lord they walk at your name they rejoice all the day and through your justice they are exalted forever I will see shall say of me, you are my Father, my God, the Rock, my Savior. Forever I will maintain my kindness toward Him, and my covenant with Him stands firm. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Paul reached Antioch in Pisidia and entered the synagogue, he stood up, motioned with his hand, and said, Fellow Israelites, and you others who are God-fearing, listen. The God of this people Israel chose our ancestors and exalted the people during their sojourn in the land of Egypt. With uplifted arm, he led them out of it. Then he removed Saul and raised up David as king. Of him he testified, I have found David, 
son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will carry out my every wish. From this man's descendants, God, according to his promise, has brought to Israel a savior, Jesus. John heralded his coming by proclaiming a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was completing his course, he would say, what do you suppose that I am? I am not he. Behold, one is coming after me. I am not worthy to unfasten the sandals of his feet. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to Matthew. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home, for it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took his wife into his home. He had no relations with her until she bore a son, and he named him Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. So, 
all the children to come up and join me. And do not ask for 30 years. This is the first year that we're not going to do it. But I promise you that we will do it next year. I love having the children of this world and having them participate in this particular homily. But we will still have a Christmas story. There are different chapters in the Christmas story. In the first one, we are very familiar with it. Of Jesus being in a stable, his parents traveling before that. They're looking for a place to stay. There was no room in the inn. They made their way into a stable, and Jesus was born there. And Mary took the baby Jesus and put him in a manger, similar to what we have over here to my right. Another part of the story that actually came somewhat later was that King Herod was very jealous of this newborn king. And so he set out to destroy the newborn king. And he sent his soldiers out searching for the newborn king with instructions to destroy the king. That's all in the Gospels. The story I'm going to tell tonight is part of that second chapter, if you will. But it's a legend. It's a tale. It's not found in the scriptures. But there is a message for all of us, not just the children. And so the name of the story is the spider who saved Christmas. For the parents, you might recognize or have seen the commercial for this particular book. It's new. It was written by Raymond Arroyo, who is on EN, EWTN's World Over Live. And I saw the book being advertised and I thought this might be a very good story to tell here tonight. Now for those who are here week after week, especially back in June, I had a very bad encounter with a spider. I got a scar to show it. Back at the end of June, I encountered I didn't see him, but he got me a bite, took me to urgent care, three times to the ER, infectious disease doctor, a hand specialist, and finally a surgeon. Six different prescriptions, and nothing took away the infection. And so for me to do a Christmas story about a spider <laughs> means that I'm a very forgiving priest. <laughs> I really toyed with it, yes or no. But this particular spider is a toy. There he is. She, it's a she. So the story is that Mary and Joseph and the baby were traveling away so they could go to Egypt. And that's the true part of the story. They were trying to get away from Herod. And so they were traveling. It was a very cold night. They were very tired. They were looking for a place to stay. They came across a cave. Well, they did not know that in the cave there were many spiders. But they went in. And when the baby Jesus cried, as babies do, the spider trembled 
at the sound of that cry. Mary and Joseph came in, did not see the spiders, and they settled down. And Joseph kept looking outside the cave into the darkness. He was hoping and praying that the soldiers would not see them or find them. And he turned to Mary and said, it is not safe. We have to keep going. We have to get to Egypt. And Mary said, do not be afraid, Joseph. And she settled down. And they settled under a beautiful web, silken web, that the big spider made. And then a little bit later, the spider dropped down right near baby Jesus. And he knew, she knew right then and there that there was something very special about this little child. But Joseph saw the spider and he took his staff and started swinging it, trying to get to the spider. The spider recoiled. And Mary said, leave it alone. They're dangerous. But he wasn't listening. And he started swinging at the web and it started to come apart. And Mary said, please, Joseph, Leave it alone. We're all here for a reason. And this place is safe. And there's beauty. And there is love. Leave it alone. Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus fell asleep. And while they were sleeping, the spider came down again, again taking notice to this baby Jesus. And she knew that there was something very, very special. The spider also knew that Joseph was concerned for the baby, for himself, and for Mary. And the spider decided that I'm going to protect them, and especially this little baby. And she began to pluck on one of the strings, and a beautiful sound went out, but only spiders could hear it. And from the back of the cave came all the other spiders, children of the great spider. And they all came, and they followed their mother. And where did she go? She went to the entrance of the cave and began to build a new web. And she started from top to bottom sides and formed the framework. And once it was done, all the other children came and they began to weave and bring strings. And before you know it, Part of the stage crew here is John McClure, also usher, extraordinary minister, sacristan, and tonight we add to his resume, stage crew. <laughs> All of a sudden, a beautiful, beautiful web was there covering the entire entrance to the cave. All the children spiders went back to where they were before. And there's the great spider decided 
to place herself right in the center to protect baby Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. And it was a very cold night. Frost was forming. And even though she was cold and afraid because she knew that the soldiers were coming, she decided to stay right there, hoping to frighten the soldiers. And as the night went on, sure enough, the soldiers came, and they were very loud, and they were coming up the hill. And they began talking about maybe this newborn king is in that cave. But when they got to the entrance, they saw this. And they examined it, it from one side to the other, top to bottom. And again, they were very loud. Joseph woke up. He was on the other side. The sun is now coming through. And he hears all this yelling and talking. And he sees the swords. And he's frightened. And he has his staff. When one soldier said to the other, there's no way, no way that there is a newborn king in there. That web is perfect. Could never have gotten in there. And then they notice the spider. And one said to the other, that spider is about ready to pounce on us. And it's very dangerous. No born king in there. We're out of here. And sure enough, they left and told the other soldiers, there's no one in there. Joseph relaxed. Mary woke up, and Joseph told her, the soldiers were here, but the spider saved Jesus and saved us. And Mary said, we're all here for a reason. And boys and girls and moms and dads, that is the message. The message is that we're all here for a reason. The spider in the story was there to save Jesus and Mary and Joseph. Jesus came into our world to save us. That was the reason he came. And parents are here, we're at home, to love each other, to love their children. And children are to be loved so that they might be loving. And we are all here as part of the Catholic community to love the Lord, to love one another, and most especially to love the unlovable, the marginalized, those who are forgotten. That's how we really show our love, because it's easy to love those who love us, but to love those who are problematic, those who are unloving, those who are poor, those who are not dressed well, they're the ones we're called to embrace and to love and to welcome. We're all here for a reason. The spider who saved Christmas is remembered every year when shiny tinsel is placed on the evergreen trees throughout the world. And so I invite everyone, when you look at your Christmas tree and you see the tinsel, to remember not just the story, but that we're all here for a reason. 
And secondly, and perhaps the Polish people would know this, Ukrainians would know this, Eastern Europeans would know this, that they have a tradition of placing in their tree a spider. Another fake one, I might add. <laughs> and that's the tradition they have to commemorate this story, this legend. Although the book is new, the legend isn't. It goes back many, many years. Boys and girls, when you're leaving church tonight, at the doors of the church, we will have tinsel. And we're going to invite you to just pull some off the board and take it home and put it on your tree. And perhaps that could be a new tradition in your families. I would recommend, and Raymond Arroyo did not ask me to do this, but I would invite you to purchase the book. There's a lot more to it. I gave you the synopsis of the book, but there's a beautiful, beautiful story and pictures in the storybook. So I invite you to do that. I also want to, and usually they'd be sitting right over here, Joanne Holden and Tommy Holden and their family. And I think everyone who comes year after year for this particular mass would know that Joanne, our parish secretary, is the one who provides me with the props, as she did this year. Tonight I only had one under here, usually I have seven or eight. But the web here, was made by Tommy Holden. And Tommy Holden, as we know, has been sick for a long time, probably coming up to two years come March. But he received a new lung back in May, May 20th. And he's making great progress. And Tom made this. And this afternoon, he came with Joanne and brought this into the church to show us how it worked. And it worked very, very well. So I know that they're watching from home along with their girls and family. And so I would ask everyone if you could stand and give Tom Holden and Joanne Holden a round of applause. Please, please be seated. And finally, when Tom came today, I didn't want him going home empty-handed, so to speak. And so I was able to celebrate the sacrament of the sick with him and to be able to give him Holy Communion, he and Joanne. And I know that they were very grateful, but I am most grateful for what they have done for us and continue to do for us each and every day. Well, Adriana is going to get the spider, and it doesn't hurt, all right? It's really not a good exchange for the baby Jesus and the spider, but you'll remember the story. And let us profess our faith 
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My brothers and sisters, reminded of God's steadfast love and fidelity revealed through this newborn child we bring our prayers before the Lord. For the church, the body of Christ in the world, and for her prophetic witness to all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who hold political power, may the grace of the Holy Spirit help them use their position for the sake of the common good. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who feel lonely this Christmas season, may Jesus bring them comfort. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who share in this worship here at Mass, may the Christ child bring great light into any darkness of our lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish community, as we continue with the Next Generation Catholic Parish Initiative, may the Holy Spirit guide our envisioning plan writing team as we soon begin to develop a parish pastoral plan. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood and religious life, especially from among our St. Francis Cabrini Parish, may those who are called respond with confidence and joy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For police officers, that they may be respected, and that they, along with firefighters, first responders, military personnel, and those on the front line of the coronavirus pandemic, may be protected from harm as they strive to serve others and for all veterans who have served our country and thus maintained our freedom as a nation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick of our community and all those who requested our prayers, including those reflected in the white intercessory book, may they be comforted by the caregiving and compassion of others. We especially pray for Nick Alvino Sr., Bob Batten, Allison Beer, El Caruso, Peter Salucci, Nicholas Corrado, Mark Gravanti, Patrick Galloway, John Haney, Dorothy Harris, Joe Henderson, George Ketty, Loretta Kelly, Loretta Lesky, Peggy Levitsky, Connor Scott Mall, Leo Maines, Bob McCarthy, Danica Mulholland, Carmela Olimpo, Tom Radzunas, Jeff Redunda, Joseph Redunda, Seal Shin, Greg Suchko, and Pam York. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the faithful departed, may they rejoice in heaven with the risen Christ and all the angels and saints, as we especially pray for Dorothy Fitzgerald, Shirley Kasparitis, Joan Kaczynski, Kathleen Kulin, Teresa Seibert, 
Frank Stefanovsky, and all those who have died as a result of violence and the coronavirus pandemic, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father of love and mercy, in your goodness, you sent us your son, whose birth we celebrate at this mass. We ask that you hear and answer these prayers through Christ our Lord, amen. Our offertory hymn is number 88, O Little Town of Bethlehem, 8-8. Eight, eight. my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we look forward, our Lord, to the coming festivities, may we serve you all the more eagerly for knowing that in them 
you make manifest the beginnings of our redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord. Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in the mystery of the word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as we acclaim. Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, guard, unite and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis our Pope, and Nelson our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, handle on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, celebrating the most sacred night in which Blessed Mary, the Immaculate Virgin, brought forth the Savior for this world, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, 
we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants, and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar and high in the sight of your divine majesty so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. 
Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, in all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. We invite those who are participating with us from their home and therefore not able to physically receive Holy Communion to please join in praying the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Our communion hymn will be number 78, Silent Night. Seven, eight, silent night.
Victor, that was excellent as always. So thank you for adding so much to our liturgy tonight. And thank Wadja, who's on the piano and now going to the organ. We thank you for adding to the uh, greatness of this celebration tonight. So thank you. Let's give Hank a round of applause. Let us pray. Grant, O oh Lord, we pray that we may draw new vigor from celebrating the nativity of your only begotten Son, by whose heavenly mystery we receive both food and drink, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. So I thank you for coming and for celebrating the birth of Christ tonight. Thank all those who are joining us from home. Very grateful for your presence, your participation. Very grateful to all those who are here much earlier before uh, the beginning of Mass to be prepared to receive all of you. So many people volunteered their time uh, to minister to the community here tonight. So we thank each and every one of them. And take a moment to thank, you cannot see them, unless they turn the camera around, but they won't do that. But I'd like to thank those who are involved in live streaming under the direction of Karen David, and working with her tonight would be Patrick McGuire and also Lawrence Cerise. So have we give them a round of applause. <laughs> Mentioned before Mass began, we have a, a Christmas gift for our parishioners, Matthew Kelly's newest book, I Heard God Laugh. So the staff has read this, and we thought it'd be a wonderful thing to give it as a gift. So as you're leaving church tonight, please take some home. Um, husband and wife, sometimes when they're leaving, they take one between them. Please take two. Even if you're both going to read the same book, give it to a neighbor. All right, just share, share the gift. And also, as I mentioned, uh, during the homily, at the end of the homily, we have the tinsel. This is just one part of it, but they're also going to be at the doors. And I would ask the children to take it home and take as many strands as you would like. We have plenty of them. And uh, if the children are reluctant to do that, parents are given permission to take it home. All right, so thank you very much. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Merry Christmas and a blessed Christmas to you and to your families. Thank you. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend, defend us in battle. battle. Be, Be our, our protection against, against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. 
and do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Our recessional hymn is number 81, Joy to the World, 8-1. Thank mm-hmm. you. 